G'day. The area model you learned for doing multiplication in grade school is absolutely relevant for work you do in high school as well. Let's do some polynomial algebra. Let's now play with numbers in base x rather than base 10. For example, let's work out x squared plus 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 3. Why not? OK, but I'm going to use the area model. This is a multiplication problem. I can think it's a rectangle. And I'm going to break the rectangle into pieces that make sense here. There'll be an x squared length and a 2x length and a 1 length. There's a rectangle of length x squared plus 2x plus 1. And I'll break the other side into two pieces of 2x and 3. Yes, working out the area of this rectangle is actually working out that multiplication problem. So let's just do it. I can see this piece here is going to be 2x by 2x. So that's going to be 4x squared. This piece here is going to be uh, x squared times 3, 3x squared. This piece is going to be 6x. By the way, I'm doing it in a random order. I know some students are told to memorize things like foil and stuff like that, but foil is not going to help here because I've got more than four pieces. My point is, just do it. Make sure you get everything. This piece is 1 times 2x. This piece is 1 times 3. And x squared times 2x is 2x cubed. Great, got all six pieces. And what's lovely here about the area model is that all the powers of x line up diagonally. You can actually see there's a 2x cubed there. There's going to be uh, 7x squareds there. On this diagonal, it gives me 8x's and gives me 3. I can see the answer is 2x cubed plus 7x squared plus 8x plus 3. Now, here's a funny thing. In algebra class in high school, people forget that x can actually be a number. For example, if x is 10 here, I've just worked out that 121 times 23 apparently is uh, 2,783. Whoa, whoa, I just done a base 10 calculation. Actually, if x is 2, I, I've just shown that 4 plus 4 plus 1, that's 9, times uh, 4 plus 3, 7, 9 times 7 equals 2 times, oh, x is 2, 2 times 8, that's 16. Uh, plus 7 times 4, 28, oh my goodness, plus 8 times 2 is 16, 16 is 16, that's 32, and a 28 makes 60, plus 3, 63. Okay, 9 times 7 is 63. My poor little brain, I cannot do arithmetic. So actually, we've just done an infinitude of arithmetic problems by doing going to algebra. Okay, okay, so yes, we can do, uh, we can do uh, polynomial multiplication with the area model beautifully. But what's really fun is to go backwards. Suppose I give you the answer first, I give you one of the factors and ask you, what was the other factor? What multiplied by this to give the answer you want? And people call doing multiplication backwards division. So let me clean the board. Let's do some division examples. OK, here's the answer to a multiplication problem. But I'm leaving out some information. What times x plus 2 gives this answer here? So can we do that multiplication backwards? That is, can I do this division problem? Here's my answer, 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. I want to divide it by x plus 2 to find out what the other factor had to be. All right, so I'm doing polynomial division now with the area model. All right, so we look at this and have to follow our noses here. Um, what I love about this is really just using your common sense and just follow your nose. So look at this 2x squared. The only cell it can come from for this diagonal is this one. So this must be 2x squared. Then logic tells me something times x, give me 2x squared, means this was 2x. Great. Uh, what else can I do? Um, well, I've got the 2x here. I know this is 2x wide and it's too high. That must be 2x times uh, 2. That's 4x. Great. Uh, all the x's. Uh, they have to add up to 7x. Something plus 4x makes 7x. That must be 3x. OK, great. This is looking good. Something times x is 3x. That must be 3. I guess the answer is 2x plus 3, but let me just double check myself because 3 times 2 is 6. And yes, everything's consistent and working out. I believe this is going to be 2x plus 3. And I think if this was a base 10 problem, we've just worked out that 276 divided by 12 is 23. All right. So let me do a few more examples of playing with this backwards. Uh, there are hiccups that happen every now and then. So let's do some examples with hiccups. All right. Back in a moment. OK. Um, Let's divide this fourth degree polynomial by this second degree polynomial, because why not? Why not? OK, so I haven't drawn the box this time. So there's my first hiccup. I'm on my ownsies. All right, but I do know one side of the box is going to be uh, an x squared, an x, and a 1. But I need the final answer to be this. And the question is, how big a box do we need to draw? How many columns? Now, um, I could just experiment, do another column. See, that gives me enough uh, diagonals, another column. But I'm going to think here. Something in fourth degree divided by second degree should give me something in second degree. So I'm going to need a column for the ones, the numbers. I'm going to need a column for the x's. And I bet I'm going to need a column for the x squareds as well. Ones, x's, and x squareds. I think I need three columns. 
because then I think this is going to match this uh, numerator perfectly. I'll have an x fourth piece from that diagonal. I've got an x cubed piece from that diagonal. I've got a negative x squared from that diagonal. Negative 2x, 2x, and negative 2. Great. Yes, I had the right number of diagonals to match that numerator. Everything was falling in, into place. Beautiful. All right, so now I'm just going to fill in this like a little, you know, Sudoku puzzle, something like that. It's kind of uh, a fun little game of logic. Uh, that piece has to be x to the fourth, because it's the only thing that's going to give me x to the fourth, which means something times x squared gave me that. That must be x squared as well. And now I can fill in this column. x, times, x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times 1 is x squared. Great. Uh, what can I do now? x cubed. Oh, this is interesting. This plus x cubed gives me x cubed. I need nothing there. OK, which means I need zero x's there. OK, maybe I'll just write zero x's. Maybe that's helpful. OK, zero x's. Great, which means zero times x is zero. Zero times one is zero. OK, well, that's a little confusing and surprising. And now, x cubes are good. Look at the uh, x squareds. Something plus zero plus x squared equals negative x squared. How about negative two x squared? I think that does the trick. OK, all right. Something times x squared makes negative two x squared. That's going to be negative two. Uh, negative 2 times x is negative 2x, and negative 2. Is this working out? Because I'm nervous about my arithmetic. Let's check if it's all good. Yes, negative 2x and negative 2. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I see this equals x squared minus 2. Whoa, okay. You might get columns or rows of zeros. Okay, I bet you can handle it. But let's do another example. Okay, let's now work out x to the fifth plus one all divided by x plus one. What times x plus one gives that answer x to the fifth plus one? Okay, so I'm gonna have a rectangle of uh, some number of columns, but I know it's gonna have two rows, two rows for an x and a one. And the question is how many columns do I, am I gonna have? Well, logic tells me dividing something in the fifth degree by something in the first degree should be something in the fourth degree, so I'm probably gonna get x to the fourth as part of my answer. Let's get enough columns to get up to the x to the fourths. There's the ones, there's the x's, there's the x squared, there's the x cubed, there's the x to the fourths. I think that's probably going to work out. Let's just double check to have the right number of diagonals for that numerator. So that should be an x to the fifth piece. There's no x to the fourth, so no x to the fourths. There's no x to the cubes. There's no x squareds. There's no x's, but there is one one. And yes, I had the right number of diagonals to actually match that good and golden. So now we get to play the logic game. Uh, that x to the fifth could only have come from there, all right, x to the fifth. Uh, something times x gave me x to the fifth, that must be x to the fourth. Uh, x to the fourth times one, great. Uh, I don't want any x to the fourth, so let me uh, undo that with a negative x to the fourth for that other part of the diagonal, which means this better be uh, negative x cubed, great. Uh, which means this is negative x cubed times one, negative x cubed, but I want no x squares on the x cubes on the diagonal, so this better be a positive x cubed to cancel it out. All right, uh, this must be x squared, x times time, x squared times x is x cubed. Uh, this must be x squared. I want no x squared, so I better put a negative x squared there so it cancels out along the diagonal. Uh, negative x, negative x, great, and negative 1 times x, that's great. Um, did I do that correctly? Negative x squared, yes, negative, that's fabulous. Um, oh, but I want no x's, no x's, so I better put an x there to cancel out along the diagonal. Then uh, something times x is x, there's going to be a 1. 1 times 1 is 1. There's a little self-check. That's all consistent and beautiful. So yes, this equals uh, x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x squared minus x plus 1. Okay, so there's a formula. Um, let me play. Let me play. Uh, so we've just shown that x to the fifth plus 1 is x plus 1 times something. Something ghastly is actually, well, that ghastly thing. So there is an interesting little formula. Because people forget that x can be a number in high school. So I'm going to ask this question. Here's my challenge for you. Is the number 36 to the fifth power plus 1 a prime number? Is it a prime number? Whoa, whoa. Do you know what? You've got the answer right here. In fact, you can even tell me that 37 is a factor of this number, therefore that number's not prime. Do you see how? Well, yeah. Just put x equals 36. We're saying that 36 to the fifth power plus 1 must equal 36 plus 1, 37, times something. I don't even care what the something is, because I've now shown that this number has a factor of 37. Is it prime? No, it's not prime. 
Okay, don't forget, x can actually be a number, and you actually discover interesting things playing this way. This is great number theory right now. But let's carry on. Okay, let's now get really quirky. Let's take the polynomial that's just the number 1 and divide it by 1 minus x. What times this gives that? Okay, all right, so the area model. Um, I'm going to have a rectangle. Um, I know one of the factors is 1 minus x, so we're like negative x plus 1. So we're going to have two rows, so I have a negative x and a 1. But I'm really nervous about the number of columns I need. So let me just draw a bunch of columns, and I just don't know how many I'm going to need, so I'll just like keep it open for a while. Maybe I can keep going if I need to. All right, so what have I got here? So um, there's one factor, and the final answer is meant to be a single 1. That is, I want a single 1. I want no x's, I want no x squareds, I want no x cubes, I want no x fourths, I want no x to the fifths, I want nothing else. So there is the crazy picture that's kind of incomplete. I don't know how many columns I've meant to draw, but what I've got so far. And the question is, uh, despite feeling nervous, is there anything I can do right now to just uh, try to make sense of this picture? Now, normally I was starting in the top left, uh, top left region for some reason and working my way to the right, but maybe I should start this way because the only thing I can see right now is this one, which has got to come from here. That's the only thing I can see to do right now, so I might as well just do it. Oh, in which case I can say something times one gives me one, that better be one. Oh, in which case one times negative x makes that negative x. Okay, great, I'm getting somewhere. Oh, but I want no x's. So actually, negative x and a positive x will give me no x's. Great. Oh, so something times 1 makes me x, that better be an x. Okay, oh, I'm in a roll here. Uh, x times negative x means negative x means this is negative x squared, but I want no x squared. So to can cancel that out, I'll put a positive x squared instead. There's zero x squareds. In which case, something times 1 is x squared, that better be x squared, in which case this is a negative x cubed, but I want no x cubes. Let's cancel it out along the diagonal. Uh, uh, x cubed times 1 is, is x cubed, but actually, uh, sorry, then I want, I'm so ahead of myself. Negative x times x cubed is negative x to the 4. I don't want any x to the 4, and I'm, see, I'm in a rhythm here. I'm in a rhythm, and I'm going to be doing this, what looks like, forever. All right, so I can see I'm going to be doing this forever. That's why I was not able to really draw the number of columns I needed, uh, because it looks like I need a whole of them. Okay, so how do I interpret this answer? Well, it looks like the other factor here is going to be, well, let's start here, 1 and an x and an x squared and an x cubed and an x to the fourth and an x to the fifth forever. There is the area model doing something really quite advanced. You may have seen this formula before. It's called the geometric series formula. The sum of the powers of x is 1 over 1 minus x. There it is by this lovely grade school model of playing with area. This is really quite amazing.